You know, the 1978 World Hockey Championships were a very, very different uh, event. Uh, held in Prague, it was later than usual. So therefore, a lot of NHL players who wanted to skate in the championships were knocked out in the first round, were able to uh, skate for the representing uh, representative, represented country teams. For example, the Minnesota North Stars had uh, two players on Team Canada, three on Sweden, and four on Team USA. Um, now, the big upset, was, of course, was Francis X. Cermak, who scored three goals to lead to checks to a 6-4 win over Soviet Union in the first round. When the arch rivals met for the second time, was the Soviets under new uh, head coach Viktor Tikhanov, who came out on top by the score of 3 to 1. Helmut Bardair, uh, Balderas uh, was the electric train, was established in the victory, and uh, drew a lot of interest from NHL scouts. Now, the teams tied for top spot with 18 points apiece, but the Soviets won the gold medal with a far superior goals for and against differential. Marcel Dion was named best forward in the tournament as Canada earned the bronze medal by defeating Sweden twice. Uh, the outstanding defenseman was the Soviets Vladislav Felizov, playing in just his second world tournament. Now, this was the 45th uh, World Championships and also the 56th European uh, title decider. Again, the USSR won for the 15th time, again, narrowly defeating the incumbent Czechoslovaks. Now, in the final day, there was essentially a gold medal game and a bronze medal game. The Soviets played the Czechs and needed to win by at least two to take the title. He took a 3-0 lead and hung on to win 3-1, capturing goal by being even head-to-head with the Czechoslovaks, but having a common two-goal advantage against everybody else. Canada and Sweden came in the final game even, so the winner would claim the bronze. Pat Hickey scored with a minute left of the contests to give Canada a 3-2 victory, and of course the bronze, their first non-Olympic uh, uh, World Championship medal in quite some time. Now, because of the uh, the allowance of professionals from the NHL in the tournament, again, the Stars had uh, uh, nine players uh, playing for Sweden, Canada, and the United States combined. So in the first round, the Czechs ended up uh, 7-0, and uh, Soviets 6-0-1 because obviously they lost uh, to the Czechs. Canada was 4-0-3, while Sweden was 4-0-3, followed by West Germany, the States, East Germany, and Finland. Finland had a bad uh, tournament, uh, losing five games despite having been only minus 11 in the standings. So the key games, of course, Canada lost to Finland in their their first game, but uh, defeated East Germany, not West Germany, but East Germany, 6-2, both German teams played. They bet the States 7-2, bet West Germany uh, 6-2, lost 5-0 to the Czechs, but defeated Sweden 7-5 and lost a tough 4-2 uh, uh, contest against Soviets. Now, in the final row, round of first to four plays, where uh, you're playing your respective uh, teams in the uh, one more time, Soviets bet Canada 5-1, the Czechs won 6-1 over Sweden, and he won 3-2 against Canada, uh, the Soviets won 7-1 against Sweden, while Canada bet Sweden 3-2, and the Soviets bet Czechoslovakia 3-1. Now, ironically, Canada had defeated Czechoslovakia in the 77 series, but uh, did not, uh, did not uh, go there. Now, uh, the relegation was East Germany because they ended up 1-3-6. And, six, and uh, East Germany had an opportunity to advance, but they tied uh, twice in, the, uh, in the, uh, the final round and thus were eliminated. And Finland saved off relegation by beating East Germany 7-2-2. Now, uh, we're talking about players on that Team Canada squad, and the majority of the players were from teams that didn't make the playoffs, although there were some players came over after the first round. So in goal was Dan Bouchard, a future of the Nordiques, Denny Harrow, a Pittsburgh future of the Montreal Canadiens, Dave Shan, Dennis Kearns, Rick Hampton, Pat Ribble, and Brad Maxwell, and Robert Picard on defense. A very strong forwards, Tom Lazia, Guy Charot, Gary Unger, Marcel Dio, Don Lever, Dennis Moruk, Wilf Paymont, Pat Hickey, Mike Murphy, Jean Pronovo, Glenn Sharpley, and Bobby McMillan. Uh, a very, very uh, highly skilled uh, uh, forward lines. And he had size. There was only one player on defense that was less than six feet tall. 
was, of course, uh, Dennis Kearns. And on the forward lines, again, uh, a good mixture of speed and power. And uh, seeing Jean Pranavo and Marcel Dio uh, play together was, uh, was uh, quite a thrill. So the 78 World Championships, uh, uh, I don't know why, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of games were being shown on YouTube in recent years that have been kind of taken down. I still uh, still don't know why. Now, this was uh, a series that was shown mostly on CTV, although I think uh, there might have been a, one or two games on the French CBC. I know TVR showed the contest. But this was uh, kind of afternoon games, so everybody was watching back in Canada. And considering Summit 72 and Summit 74, 77 and 78, uh, the playoff rounds didn't really get hot until uh, the semifinals, so there was a lot of people watching. It's probably one of the most highly rated uh, uh, world championships in quite some time. Now, interestingly, uh, ladies and gentlemen, there was a series of Panini stickers of the uh, tournament that uh, the kids could uh, collect, and uh, what would really uh, was interesting too as well, ladies and gentlemen, there was uh, uh, something called a sportscaster series. What uh, now what Canada stood out with this uh, tournament was their very interesting multiple style front to their jerseys. Now, if you look at uh, uh, all uh, put together, it wasn't really a Canadian flag or similar to uh, the, the World Juniors that Gretzky wore or what they call the Canada Cup style. The Canada Cup style, they had the Canada on the right-hand side, but the home jerseys, again, it was like, we're seeing green, red, red, gold, uh, all together. But uh, again, the emergence of Helmut Barra Balderas, the opportunity for Marcel Dion to win a medal for Canada, Jean Pradevo, a very well respected, uh, you know, forward for uh, for uh, uh, for many years, finally getting a chance to win. But Will Pema again, uh, uh, he was a uh, he was dirty during the tournament. I don't want to go too much of it because every time I mention Will Pema, a lot of people get pissed off. But uh, to see the young players that Canada had there as well, uh, you know, uh, Lysiak especially, a very underrated player. And Guy Chiron, after those bad years, starting off for Washington, seeing him open out on the big uh, rink. And Gary Younger, of course, at the time, he was only 30. So he was the unofficial uh, leader, him and Dion of the squad. And, of course, the young Dennis Marouk, who score, could score in bunches. But... Uh, you know, it was, uh, it was kind of weird, ladies and gentlemen, because there was only one Maritimer on the team, and it was mostly Quebec and Ontario, Ontario players. So a very much uh, an OHL, QMHL graduate team. So ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you're doing here with our World Championship uh, podcast, let us know with a like, comment, subscribe, or share. As we like to say in Northern Brunswick, keep your stick in the ice. Bye.